Hi everybody. Today we are doing the chapter physical world, grade 11, first chapter, physics first chapter. Okay. Before we go into detail about this, let's see what is science. You know the word science. It originates from the Latin verb scientia, the meaning of which is to know. Now, when we learn about physics, physics. What is the meaning of physics? Physics is a study of nature and its laws. And in the word physics comes from a Greek word meaning nature. There are two principal types of approaches in physics. They are unification and reduction. Now let's see in detail what is unification and what is reduction. Unification. This approach considers all of the world's phenomena as a collection of universal laws in different domains and conditions. The best example for that is law of gravitation applies both to falling of an apple from the tree as well as to the motions of planets around the sun. Another example I'll tell you is laws of electromagnetism. Electromagnetism laws governs all electric and magnetic phenomena. Now next let's see what's reduction. Reduction is an approach to derive properties of complex system from the properties and interaction of its constituent parts. You are deriving the properties of the whole complex system from the properties of its constituent parts. Example for this is temperature studied under thermodynamics is also related to average kinetic energy of molecules in the system. Let's see what is classical physics and modern physics. Physics is broadly classified into two types based on its scope. The first one is classical physics and the second is modern physics. Classical physics, this deals with macroscopic phenomena, whereas modern physics deals with microscopic phenomena. And what is this macroscopic domain, you know? The macroscopic domain includes the phenomena at the laboratory, terrestrial and astronomical scales. In macroscopic domain, the first one we will learn is mechanics. Mechanics is based on Newton's laws of motion and laws of gravitation. It is concerned with motion of particles, rigid and deformable bodies and general system of particles. Example is propulsion of rocket by ejecting gases, sound waves, water waves. All these are the examples of mechanics. Then we have electrodynamics. This deals with electric and magnetic phenomena and is associated with charged and magnetic bodies. Example for this is motion of a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field. The next is optics. From the word optics, it's very clear that this deals with the phenomena involving light. The best examples for that is reflection and refraction of light, dispersion of light through prism, etc. Then we have thermodynamics. This deals with the systems in macroscopic equilibrium and changes in internal energy, temperature, entropy of systems under application of external force or heat. The example for this is efficiency of heat engines. And now let's see what is microscopic domain. Microscopic domains include phenomena at minuscule scales like atomic, molecular, and nuclear. It also deals with interaction of probes of electrons, photons, and elementary particles. Now we will learn about the fundamental forces in nature. We know that force for us is either a push or a pull. This we have learned before in ninth standard. It can be due to muscle, magnet or a machine. Galileo was the first to understand the nature of force. Newton was the first to explain it and 
in a set of laws. At present, we have understood that all the forces in nature are almost similar and can be grouped into four fundamental types. The first one, the gravitational force. This is the weakest force in nature. It is a force of mutual attraction between two bodies due to their masses. We have already learned that every body attracts every other body of the universe to this force. It has no range limits. Next is the weak nuclear force. The range is very small, about 10 raised to minus 16 meter. Now let's see what is weak nuclear force. It is a force that appears only between elementary particles involved in a nuclear process such as the beta decay of nucleus. In beta decay, the nucleus emits an electron and an uncharged particle called the neutrino. Now here we have electromagnetic force. So let's see what is electromagnetism. The force acting between two electric charges at rest is called electrostatic force. You know the Coulomb's law. This gives the value of this force. And we also know that light charges ripple and unlike charges attract. An electric conductor has a magnetic field around it. And a copper wire moving in a magnetic field produces electric current. So we see that electricity and magnetism are closely related. Isn't it? So the term electromagnetism. This is stronger than the weak force by a factor of 10 raised to 12. Fourth one is strong nuclear force. The strong attractive force which binds together the proton and neutrons in a nucleus is called the strong nuclear force. And here it is of a very short range that is 10 raised to minus 15 meter. And electrons are not included in this range. Now, dear children, let's see what are the factors responsible for the progress of physics. Some of the factors are the quantitative and the qualitative analysis, application of universal laws in different contexts, then the approximation approach, that is a complex phenomena broken down into collection of basic laws, and the extracting and focusing on essential features of a phenomena. Now, let us see what are conserved quantities. Physical quantities that remain constant with time are called conserved quantities. Conserved quantities can be scalar or vector. And dear children, what is a scalar and what is a vector? Do remember, scalar quantities are the quantities that have magnitude, whereas Vector quantities are the quantities which have both magnitude and direction. An example for scalar quantity is energy. And an example for vector quantity is total linear momentum. Now, here we have the conservation laws. You know, children, some conservation laws are true for one fundamental force, but not for the other. Some of these laws are Law of conservation of mass, law of conservation of energy, law of conservation of linear momentum, law of conservation of angular momentum, law of conservation of charge, law of conservation of parity, and it goes so on. All these laws we will be doing it in detail in other videos. Please subscribe my channel for more videos and press the bell icon to receive notifications.